Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and today Zip and I are going to show you the ultimate way to saddle your horse where we put all the best tips and tricks on how to, your, how to saddle your horse, giving them responsibility and also making it a good experience for them all in one video. I hope you guys enjoy it. So the first thing we're going to start with is teaching your horse to ground tie to be saddled. So I have other videos on how to teach your horse to ground tie. We're not going to go through all that right now, but I'm just going to point out that I like to have my horse ground tied while saddling. So if they want to move around at all, um, I guess this step actually requires two parts. Part one is he's ready and willing to stand still to begin with. So that means you might play with them a little bit to be, um, first and then saddle them or it might mean taking some time and teach them to ground tie so that when you drop the rope, it means they should stand still and just relax. This is a very important thing because for a horse standing still, it also represents that mentally they're not, they're quiet in their mind. They're not busy and just buzzing around. They're settled. So this is the best time to saddle your horse. If they're busy and you try to control them by tying them or cross tying them or having somebody else hold the horse, you're gonna be putting some tension and brace into saddling, so you don't wanna do that. The other reason that I don't like to tie my horses while saddling is when, you, when a horse is tied up, there's an element of them feeling claustrophobic, unless they've been doing that for years and years, even then it, it still can be a problem. So um, there's an element of them feeling claustrophobic, and then when you saddle a horse, that's another element of them feeling claustrophobic. You put those two together, it's an easy place to teach your horse to pull back or to teach your horse to wiggle around and avoid being saddled. So let's go ahead and, and do some preparation, teach that horse to stand still, and then go ahead and get your saddle out. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce our horse to the saddle pad. Um, in this step, you can put the saddle pad on either side of your horse. Um, normally, people tend to do a lot of things on the left side of their horse, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to um, throw the saddle pad on him on his right side. Now, when I do this, um, I'm not just gonna plop it on him, I'm just gonna swing it and kind of slide it up there nice and smooth. If anything, I would rather my saddle pad be slightly ahead here so that <coughs> when I put the saddle on, I can slide it back, okay? It would be a worse thing to put the saddle on and then try to bring your saddle pad forward because what would that do? That would ruffle up all the hairs going this way. So I'm actually gonna leave my saddle pad slightly further forward and then put my saddle on. So like everything, there's a right way and a wrong way to go about it. So first thing is I wanna have the saddle um, I want to hold it with one arm. So I have my left hand on the back of the cannel right here, and I'm going to roll the stirrup into my armpit. This allows me to kind of hold it with one hand. I can move around if I need to adjust my saddle pad. You know, um, if I want to have that lead rope, if my horse isn't great at ground tying yet, I can have that lead rope in this hand free. So it kind of frees up some things. Now, the next part that this helps with is it's going to allow me to swing the saddle and turn with my upper body. Okay, so I'm going to show you the right way to do this, and then I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it. So here's the right way. I'm gonna swing and rotate and land that saddle nice and smooth. It didn't bang, it didn't clunk, didn't do any of that, okay? And I rotated my body as I did it. Now, the wrong way to do this would be to have the saddle like this and go, and what a lot of people do is they, they tend to flip the stirrup up here, okay? And then they come here and they're gonna lift it. Well, this is a pretty intimidating <laughs> picture um, for a horse. Now they can get used to it. It also requires a lot of my smaller muscle groups, okay? My, my arms and my shoulders to lift it and then put it here. Okay, so that for me is a lot more work than just swinging it up. So again, let me show you that swing technique and let me show you how kind of easy that is and, and unoffensive it is to a horse. Because the bottom line is a lot of times horses don't like to be saddled or they start moving around because they don't like to be saddled because of how they're being saddled. Um, and so we're gonna do some preventative maintenance here. So again, got my saddle here, hand on the front of it like this, land it on them. Now, um, I want my skirt of my saddle to kind of line up with the back of my saddle pad. So there's just a little bit of saddle pad in front, and then I want my saddle to be dead center on the saddle pad, um, kind of right and left here. Then I'm gonna kind of hoik this up into the, the gullet there. So that cl clears room for the horse's mane and neck as their, horse is, as their head is gonna kind of raise and lower. I'm gonna slide it back into position here. Let my cinches down, which is part of the reason why I saddled him on the right side. I don't want to make three trips back and forth around here set those down good spot of where I'd like them to be. Um, <coughs> this must have been on a big horse last. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. Why, do you know why that's like that? For real? Jeez. I'm ready to cinch them up on the other side. Again, another big reason is <coughs> we tend to handle horses a lot from the left side. So this is just one way to kind of make a, save us a little bit of time, but also um, get our horses some exposure to being handled on this right side. Okay, so let's come around over here. So now I'm gonna put my stirrup up there and uh, <coughs> I have my, uh, my latigo done up on this side. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach under with my left hand. I wanna do this with my left hand instead of my right hand because if you can see, I, with my left hand, I can keep my face kind of away from legs and feet if something were to go wrong there, okay? Um, if I reach under with my right hand, you can see how far my face has to kind of get underneath that horse. It's just a little more dangerous. Again, if you've got an old horse that's really well behaved and all that stuff, it's no big deal. But for me, I'm training a lot of different horses, a big variety, and so I need to have habits that keep me safe. I always tell people, excellence is a series of good habits. That's all it is. Um, and, and for me, it being safe with horses is the, is the priority. So now that I got my cinch and my uh, latigo is, is uh, stowed away in a correct way, I'll show you how to do that in a second. I'm gonna run it through there. <clears throat> now this particular cinch has a barrel on it. If you could zoom in right here. Um, you know, cinches have different designs. This one has a barrel, a roller. So there's not a lot of friction when you go to cinch them up, which means that it would be an easy mistake to make to over tighten the girth. So now I'm gonna run this through here. Drop it through. I'm gonna to check to see where it's at with the amount of holes that I have. It looks like it's gonna end up in kind of a good spot. And so I'm just gonna cinch him up lightly for this first time. Now another thing is this is really smooth here because I put a little bit of baby powder on it or talcum powder for those of you in Australia. Okay, so um, got a little baby powder on that. That makes it slide nice and smooth, okay? Um, this doesn't matter as much up here in Wisconsin in the winter time, but in the summertime when your latigo is, has some moisture from the humidity, um, it can get really sticky and sometimes it catches, catches, and then you pull real hard and, whoosh, and it tightens up on that horse. And again, that's gonna teach them to be a little cinch sour where they're biting um, at the person trying to saddle them up. So this is all about just getting in good habits so that it's kind of like the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So that's, the, that's what we're coming with here today. Now, now I'm gonna, um, I believe I learned this trick. Um, a lady that showed it to me was Debbie Adcock but I think she learned it might be from Chris Cox. He might've had a video on this. So now I'm gonna run this latigo up through my keeper here, and then I'm gonna double it over <clears throat> and come through here. So you can see, it's kind of tucked away nice and neat. Now, when I can use the holes in my latigo, I like to versus tying a knot because it keeps it nice and smooth. So now I'm gonna reach under, grab my back cinch. Again, just cinch this up lightly. Don't make the mistake of, of um, and you, see, you can see it's just got a little bit of room there. Don't make the mistake of having this too loose and having this hanging down here. Um, have you ever heard of a thing called a fly hobble? <laughs> so if a horse were to kick out a fly and they catch their hind leg in that cinch, you want to be careful about that. And so I'm just going to, even though I'm not using it tightly right now, I don't plan on roping anything at the moment, um, I still want it snug enough that I don't, I don't, it's just not just hanging down. I also personally like getting horses used to the feel, feel of it there and keeping my saddle in a good spot. Now, let me show you a way here to tie your, your latigo up. Let's say you didn't have holes here. Um, and so you kind of got to a spot here where it's like the, there's not a hole there and you don't really want to loosen it and you don't want to pull it any tighter. So how are you going to tie this knot here? I'm going to show you a knot called the, uh, um, called the Packers knot. <clears throat> so the latigo comes down the left side of your D-ring here. Then you double it back on itself and then run it through here. Okay. So it just makes a little bind right there on your D-ring of your saddle. So you can see that's gonna keep that, that cinch from sliding back and then you don't have to worry about getting it to the exact hole each time. It's super quick and easy. It's stowed away there. There's no big knot underneath your leg. Uh, nice and slick and smooth, okay? Um, and then when you're done, obviously, you can uh, take this. You can just pop that out, nice and easy. Um, always make sure, too, when you're undoing your cinch, um, you don't do what I just did and you are supposed to undo your back cinch first when you're untacking. So keep that in mind. And uh, that is my favorite way to saddle a horse, okay? Now, one other little thing that I'd like to add to this is, um, we normally tighten our cinches up in three stages. So the first one is just, you get your saddle on, you cinch them up, 
and you're either going to go work with them on the ground a little bit or you're going to go bridle them you're going to do something like that so um, at that stage if you try to get them as tight as it's going to be so it's riding tight you're probably going to run into an issue where your horse doesn't like being cinched up that much right off the bat okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to walk him over and get his bridle on <clears throat> and then I'm gonna cinch him up again. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so once you've had him cinched up for the first time, then you want to like walk them over to put the bridle on or do a little bit of groundwork because every horse <clears throat> is going to tense up just a little bit when you go to first, that first cinching. So by just walking them around a little bit and you come back to your cinch, um, you'll see that there's going to be some slack in it, right? And so look at that. I can get, I got two more holes. So I got that much more latigo out of it. Now I can put it in here, <clears throat> readjust this part. And now my horse is ready to be ridden in that. Now, when you're ready to unsaddle your horse, you wanna start with the back cinch here. So you're gonna go ahead and undo this part, drop that down, get your stirrup out of the way, pop that out. And let me show you how we're gonna tie up our latigo here. So I'm gonna pull that out, I'm gonna fold this in half. I'm gonna bring this up through the D-ring here like this, kinda of double it down. We're gonna bring this over to the left, come around the front, and then back up through here. Now, I like this, it's a nice, neat way to stow it away. And the, the real nice part about this is right here with one hand, you can, when you go to resaddle the next horse, you can pull this out with one hand and drop it through your cinch and you're, you're ready for, for the next one, okay? So, great way to do it. Again, fold it in half, run it through the D-ring and down, make that even. So you can see I got all the straps fairly even. It's okay to leave this one a little longer. Come around it, that's all it is and then tuck it through the loop you just made. Okay, tighten that up. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we're gonna go around to the other side. Come on over here. <clears throat> you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do up your cinches. Now, sorry, I'm doing this with my kind of out of habit here. So I'm gonna fold the cinches this way and I'm gonna put my back cinch through my front cinch. Okay, just like that. Now, not every cinch has enough room to do this, but most of them do. And so I'm gonna put that through my back cinch. Now, you can see how my uh, cinch keeper here is tipped in instead of sticking out like this. The reason it's sticking in is because I fold my cinches up backward like this. But the other reason I do this is because I'm not twisting them because the leather and the neoprene here on this cinch can, especially if it's wet, it can kinda wanna stick and stay stuck in a, in a twist. So if I didn't do it like that, um, I haven't even done it this way in so long. Um, most of the time you would end up, even if you run it through the back here, you would end up twisting everything to kind of bring it through here. And uh, So this is how I would not do it. Um, and you can see how these are kind of twisted in a funny shape here, and now it's pulling this out. Again, you could do it that way, not a huge deal. Um, but for me, I'm gonna bring the back cinch through the front one here, like this, pretty easy. I just slide that up, pull it down, tucked away nice and smooth. Now, when you take your saddle off, a lot of people just drag that saddle right off the side. And if I want to point something out here. You see these little bolts coming out of the stirrups. A lot of stirrups are designed this way. If I just drag this saddle off the horse, that's going to drag right across the spine. It's not going to be comfortable. So again, next time I go to saddle him, he's not going to want to stand there. He's going to dance around a little bit. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is grab both ends of my saddle pad here, and I'm going to slide it back and off. The other reason you're going to want to do it this way, see all the hairs are laying nice and smooth here? Um, I can look and see what my sweat pattern looks like. I can see if something was irritating him and uh, ruffling the hair. So make sure you slide that saddle kind of up and over their hip instead of dragging it across their back. You're going to have a horse that wants to stand still a lot better to be saddled. And uh, this will keep your horse being more cooperative and uh, both of you guys having a lot more fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.